This is Episode 6, speaking with Paul Wagner about purpose and authenticity. Welcome. I'm Kimberly Henry, and this is Living the Good Life. Welcome to episode number six in Happy New Year. This is the first episode that we've actually recorded in 2019, so I hope you're off to a great start. I am loving the energy around this year. Everybody seems to be really happy and hopeful in this new year, more so than usual, and I've been around for a few of them. Uh, This one just feels really, really good. Somebody this morning was saying they don't even have a problem writing the new year. And that's something that I've always struggled with as well. When you move into a new year and you're, you know, writing the date for getting to to move it forward. And I actually realized it's been easy for me too. So hope you're having a great experience as well. If you're needing a little help to jumpstart your year, you want to really thrive this year and you can't figure out exactly what direction you want to go in, I encourage you to stop at KimberlyHenry.com, click on the tab for the podcast, and you'll find there a worksheet that you can use to discover your passions. It's the 25 ways to discover your passions, with the end goal being seeing what's important to you and what you might want to move forward on to create a new uh, track in your life or improve the existing one. Our guest today believes finding your purpose versus finding your passion is the key to evolving and living authentically. I first met Paul Wagner several years ago at one of his workshops and really quickly we became really good friends. I'm super energized by his exuberance. He has this personality and this um, authenticity that just bleeds through when you speak with Paul. He's a very complex guy who's CEO of a web and mobile tech company, mentors startups, does spiritual coaching. He's an Emmy Award winner, author, and an app developer. And there's more in there, I'm sure. He seems to walk with a foot in two or maybe more worlds, a compassionate, sensitive spiritual world and a straightforward, no holds barred business world. In our discussion, Paul shares how he developed his popular personality app, cards and book based on a dream he had several years back and now how it's developing in the next few weeks or months to incorporate artificial intelligence in the near future. He encourages people to use this tool, the personality deck, to become more authentically you, identify your personalities and and really become more of who you are. Paul has some different insights about living your passion than you'll hear from most, which he's developed over 25 years, completely reversing, he says, what he taught in the beginning of his career. You also might be surprised to learn he's not a big fan of new aginess, as he says, or the cultural history of the white male, which he is one. Paul's sometimes brash persona serves to grab his audience's attention and to make a point. There's no apologies here for that, just fair warning. There is colorful language and ideas in the conversation ahead. Please listen in as I speak via telephone with the Paul Wagner. I am so delighted to welcome businessman, entrepreneur, spiritual guy. Uh, There's not even a single sentence, I don't think, that can encompass the man of Paul Wagner, uh, who I also call my friend. So, Paul, thank you for spending some time with us today. Well, you're welcome. I'm really happy to be here, and I believe in you, and I love your way and your style and how you think, and I'm, I'm excited to spend some time talking today. Ditto, 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 ditto. So you are over on the other side of the mountain range from me in Boulder, Colorado. And what are you doing over in Boulder these days? Uh, I'm spending a lot of time writing. I've been working on the new version of my personality cards and um, also working on my personality app, which is now going to have some artificial intelligent um, algorithms built in and and it's, uh, it's growing in leaps and bounds. So, yes, I've been kind of living on the crunchy side, even though I run a web and mobile tech company. I'm, I'm trying to spend as much time as I can to develop these tools for personal development. And that's one of the things I absolutely love about you and identify with in, in who you are is that you can kind of embrace all of that. But let's kind of dial back and talk about what 
your what you're referring to the uh, personality cards and the app what is that all about sure so the personality cards um, which can be found at personalityapp.com and paulwagner.com very um, smooth the personality yeah so the <laughs> personality cards came out of a, a dream i had about about 6 years ago and it was it was one of those moments in my life where I knew something somewhere, somehow, um, some force, some guide, some angels, if you will, somebody was speaking to me. And somehow I was able to understand that it wasn't just a, uh, an interesting idea. It wasn't just a, a, a wacky thought. But what came to me is an image of a waterfall with all these different faces in it. And each face had a different feeling, a different style, and what I interpreted it to be um, a different personality. And so I wrote down descriptions of each one of them, and I named each one of them. And at the end of this experience, which for me was, I would call it a spiritual experience or a very, uh, an opening or an awakening of some sort, um, an unveiling, if you will, I, um, I realized I had 234 personalities fully developed and wow. each one with their own idiosyncrasies. And I was, um, I was kind of blown away by it and I let it sit for a few days and then I read back on it and I was like, Oh, that's really fucking cool. That's incredibly unusual. And I've always been a fan of Jung and I've always been a fan of, of tarot cards especially the Osho deck. I think it's very real. And I, I, I thought that, you know, there's got to be a way to take these, either, you know, the Enneagram, which is, it's, I think it's nine things and the archetypes, Jung's archetypes, there's nine of those and or 12, I, I forget. So there's, there's those little systems that are so broad and generalized and realized, I realized I had created something very specific. So I immediately got to work on a tarot deck for the first 78 cards. And now all 234 of the cards are, are, are designed, and the, the book, The Field Guide to Personalities, has the first 78, and volume two and three are about to come out. And, and then being a geek, I thought this should be in an app, and so you can get a personality reading by clicking on a few buttons in the app, and it gives you kind of a sense of temporary personalities that might be at play in your life. Um, And then the personality app from here goes to um, a whole other level with artificial intelligence and uh, uh, facial reading emotions and also picking up emotions in the timber of the voice. And that will bring up a specific personality so an individual can explore who they might be portraying and how they might be feeling, even if they can't sense that intellectually. And why why do you find that that's important that, that we explore that? Well, from from what I can tell in my wacky little life, um, and I've been very blessed and fortunate and traveled the world and won a million awards and lived in different countries and had beautiful, amazing people in my life. And like I've, I've had all these remarkable, amazing experiences. But the most important part of my experience has been um, studying with a or really following um, uh, a Hindu master named as known as Ama. She's the hugging saint. And what I found by being around Amma is that I was, I was crying a lot. There's a lot of crying and a lot of emotions, other emotions, just a lot of stuff would come up. And I realized being around the light and allowing yourself to kind of decompress and unfold in the presence of light, whether it's Amma or another master or just in the comfort of your own home when you're focusing on the light, um, emotions, finding, releasing, and expressing emotions um, actually helps us find peacefulness and unveils um, who we really are. And that allows us to pursue things in our life that are meant for us, as opposed to pursuing things that are based on our own delusion or our own contrivances. And the cards and the app, the personality cards and the personality app, what they do is they, they show you the emotions you're carrying, the attitudes, the behaviors. And, and they also, in the writing on the cards and the writing in the app, you, you can see ways of freeing yourself from the emotions some, and to work toward changing behavior. And, and through the expressing of emotions, you can release 
uh, personalities, archetypes, attributes, and behaviors. And, and by doing that, by allowing yourself to unwind, decompress, and, and unfold, um, uh, you, you evolve and you become more who you are and more aware of what is meant for you and what is not meant for you. And how does that contribute? I mean, that's incredible. And I think we all want that, but how does that contribute to the daily ins and outs of the life we're living today or the success or the plans or the goals that we have individually moving forward? That's a great question. No one's ever asked me that question. I love that question. Um, so how do, how do these beautiful cards and this warm, fuzzy writing, what is it really going to do for me? Exactly. Is that, is that a fair way to, yeah. What, what, Very what is this? Yeah. What is this going to do for me? Yeah. Well, as with, with any process that, that deflates your ego and opens your heart, you come closer and you move closer and you unveil closer to who you truly are. And so in, in your daily course of life, if you're getting up at 6.30 in the morning and you, the alarm goes off and you're bouncing out there and you're getting some food and you're starting to make some decisions and you're getting into your schedule, if, if you are, are in that kind of a grind and you're not living according to who you are, if, if the secret of who you are has yet to be connected with, yet to be uh, embodied, that grind is going to mean nothing. You're literally perpetuating a set of routines and habits that will bring you nothing, will do nothing for you, and will, will literally carry you down a path that's based on your own self-delusion. But if you're sitting with the light, if you're expressing the emotions, if you're unwinding, if you're unfolding, if you have tools like these that allow you to release your delusions, your, these, these phony personalities um, that are not fully who you are, then the decisions you make, the activities that you have in your life, actually are, they, they feed the creation of a life that's honoring of who you are. And, and this is the challenge in life. We, you know, we're, we're born into a, 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 a most of us, and in a cold room in a hospital with a bunch of people, we adopt these religions and, 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 and a socialization within a family, and then we're within a, a state and a country, and there's all these ideologies. We've absorbed all this, what I really believe are stories that aren't necessarily based on any measure of truth. And in the absorbing of these stories, we adopt behaviors. And in adopting behaviors, we perpetuate thoughts and actions that kind of lock us in to living inauthentically. And so my goal with the cards and the apps and in everything that I do, whether it's speaking or coaching or counseling um, in a retreat that I'll do, you know, it's, it's all about helping people find their truth. And I don't think it's about passion. Passion is second chakra. Passion is garbage. Passion is ego. Passion is just energy. We don't know if that passion or that energy is supporting the authentic you or supporting a contrivance. You can't start with passion. Because mm. you can have passion for anything. Any moron can have a couple of beers and be like, ah, I feel fucking passionate about flipping over that car or going to get that job. It's mm. not based or born of who you are. It's a drug. Passion is a drug. Interesting. And believe me, when I was, when I was 26, I was touring the world with a, um, with a show. And I, it did very well. It was all about following your passion. And over time, um, I've debunked my own lecture, you know, over the past 25 years. That lecture, while it helped people see themselves and it was exciting and fun and, uh, you know, it helped people evolve and explore themselves and the workshop that followed it, it, it I, I just notice it's really nothing. Passion is, is really just ego. So the, the, the truth of who we are is 
is not all that exciting. It's very quiet and subtle. It's, it's very simple and clear. It's not complicated. Now, when you look at my cards and you look at the app, it's like, wow, this is a really cool system. And, you know, it can be perceived as, wow, that's a lot of thought went into it. And there's a lot of pieces and wow, it's colorful. And, and you can see it as, well, isn't that complicated? And if the self is so simple, well, I, I think we all need tools that can help us simplify. We need ways of cracking our surface, cracking ourselves open so that we get rid of the socialization and all these stories and walk slowly, thoughtfully, expressing our emotions, releasing all this garbage, walking slowly and thoughtfully back into who we are. So back to your question, how does that affect day to day and how does it affect decisions? Well, if I'm waking up and I've been expressing my emotions in healthy ways, and if I really have decompressed, and if I'm continually doing that, then I'm not adopting false selves moving forward. So that when I wake up, I'm more thoughtful and aware when I wake up. I'm more thoughtful and aware throughout my day. I'm more connected to who I am and everything that I'm doing because the real me is fully involved and not covered over with some contrived personality or idea of who I thought I needed to be. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense, as does, I mean, you can get wrapped up in, in that, but you can, I mean, let's face it, passion feels good. Joy feels good. And what you're well, talking and, about joy feels passion more are, thoughtful. Well, joy and passion are two different things. Passion can feel good, but passion is, is, is also, it, it, it's, it can be chemical. It's, it's not mm -hmm. necessarily what can drive your evolution. I think that's the distinction I'm trying to make. Okay, so driving evolution joy, is really where you're heading. Yeah, I, I, I would like people to evolve. Into what? Into who they truly are. Hmm, interesting. Well, this is a good time to ask you what a good life embodies for you. Well, for me, I, you know, it's, it's changed a lot over the years, and it's probably changed since the last time you and I may have talked about something like this, but you know, for me, a, a, a good life is, is, is not feeling as though any chemical is overriding my sense mm -hmm. of self and, and sense of awareness. So nothing, no illusion is moving through me. I'm not embodying or supporting any illusion. And, and, you know, there's a, I forget who talks about this, but maybe it's Ram Das or Thich Nhat Hanh, um, or maybe it's Yogananda. Um, but there's, there's this thought of, of and it's, it, it's all over the new, new age scene. Like the new age scene is like, oh yeah, I'm feeling like really connected right now, man. Like we're right. all one and I'm totally feeling like, <laughs> oh, I'm totally feeling with the tree and we're all like, you know, that, you know, first of all, the new age scene is just a big clusterfuck of narcissism. <laughs> but what, what comes out of that, that those narcissistic ideologies is that people are identifying with feelings and a feeling of connectedness and, and these, these personality concepts that are, are, are so far fetched, odd and not based in reality that they really have no spirituality about them, even though they, you know, everybody's wearing white and purple and, you know, dancing a, a, a dervish dance. So, Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I look at all that behavior and I look at myself when I was living in that behavior and I realize it's not about that chemical feeling of connectedness. It's not, all that is ego. All that is chemical. But when you remove all those layers and you fully express your feelings and let the feelings pass, either express or let them move past. There's, there's this stillness. So for me, what, what is the life that I like to lead? It's that stillness where I don't feel obsessively driven to do something. It's more a dance with my muse. I don't feel obsessed to achieve or have notoriety. It's more an honoring of my craft 
it's it's not about ego, the proliferation of a concept. It's more about how can I be in service? Mm -hmm. And all those things are kind of very subtle and simple and soft, which is very different than how I used to live. So something shifted in me and I'm enjoying that, that new awareness, that new connectedness. You mentioned emotions. So that's really all part of the different personalities and the attachment to different outcomes and, um, pers- and attachment to those personalities that you don't really realize are there. How do you move mm. through that? How do you address those emotions? Because we can't, we can't stuff them. You know, you that's, can't that stuff them. That doesn't serve. No, that's, that's the whole thing. We, we can't stuff them. The, the biggest challenge, I think, for most people is um, knowing how they feel. Mm-hmm. Like most of us don't really know how we're feeling. Mm-hmm. And we don't know what we're carrying. And unless we sit in silence or sit with a spiritual master, sit with light, sit with a tool that can walk us to the light, unless we're doing that, we're not going to even find those emotions, let alone find ways of moving beyond them. And moving beyond them is different than expressing. I believe that most of us, including myself, I need to express emotions. If I don't, when I'm truly softening and crying and everything is moving through my body, I have a visceral shift not just physically or emotionally, but spiritually on a soul level. Mm -hmm. And there's something that leaves me, like something leaves. Um, In some cases, I can, uh, in an experience where emotions are provoked, those emotions can leave Mm -hmm. without, without me ever consuming them. And that's glorious when that happens. (laughs) I mean, that's, that's, I think the point of evolution that I'd like to be able to have all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I think if we're not consciously letting the emotions pass and if, and if we're not conscious of when we're absorbing them and consuming them and then we're not dealing with them, if we're not trying to learn how we feel so that we can actually move through them, mm-hmm. then we're, we're, we're probably in a rut or a grind or living uh, a concept that is not 100% in service to our our core soul nature. This is really interesting conversation coming from the guy who wrote up, who wrote Startup Confidential. (laughs) It feels like a total shift. So tell us how you came, how you have both of these things within you, these lives. (laughs) Uh, You know, I've, I've been very, very lucky in my life and I've had the opportunity to work with, um, Global icons, really. A man named Fred Silverman, who used to run all the TV networks in Hollywood, and a guy named Michael Eisner, who um, uh, ran Disney. He's the guy that took Disney to a whole new level Mm -hmm. uh, globally. Um, I was very lucky to to have Fred as a mentor and and as a business partner. And through him, I was able to meet Michael and get get feedback on different parts of a a business we were doing together. But being exposed to people like this you know, as kind of a crunchy, open hearted guy. Um, it was a culture shock for me. Mm-hmm. And, and it was very painful for me because I'm, I'm emotional. Uh, I have wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm very open hearted. I'm empathic. I absorb people's stuff. I carry it. It's, you know, all the stuff intuitives and empaths do. I've, I'm like by the book, I'm really an introvert empath that, um, uh, has, has a difficult time in, in groups that uh, where I've got to interact with a lot of people in a group. And I'm not, if I'm not the facilitator or the guy with the microphone, I absorb too much in those kind of social scenarios. Mm-hmm. So here I am with these iconic geniuses and I had come up with some brilliant ideas, which were awesome and ahead of their time. And I, ha- I wanted to bring them to life. So I had no choice but to, but to partner with these amazing people, but it put me through a process that was devastating to me. I mean, it, it, it really crippled me. Mm. Um, and to no fault of their, of theirs, it was, it was just that 
who they were was uh, a challenge for me. Mm. And what I learned from it was a, a level of, of criticalness, a, a level of um, awareness about the processes important for, uh, to, to run a business. Mm-hmm. The, the level of, of, uh, that you have to get to um, around ego. You've literally got to remove your ego from your creation. You, you mm-hmm. can't uh, identify with your creation. Because if you want that creation to truly come to life, you have to nurture it and help it grow and help it expand. You can't be like, oh, it's my baby. I know it's, it's perfect just the way it is. Mm-hmm. And that's what I learned with these guys. And after that whole process, and then after helping a whole bunch of startups here in Colorado, um, I, I, I just, I learned so much. I thought, I don't think people know these things. Mm-hmm. So and I bumped into some real knuckleheads in Colorado, some guys that were so <laughs> into their ego and, and so defensive and couldn't pivot or couldn't think thoughtfully, honestly, didn't know how to have integrity-based relationships. So, you know, after all these experiences, if I didn't write that book, I, I probably would have had a heart attack. I had to express uh, what I experienced, and I thought that book would be of value to the world. Yeah, I don't think knuckleheads in business are exclusive to Colorado. <laughs> Just saying. No. Well, <laughs> well, what you ha- what you have going on here in Colorado, which is very different some, than some of the other major startup communities, is you 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 don't have the level of money and the 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 deal flow happening in Colorado that. Um, that you have in other major cities like mm-hmm. Los Angeles, New York, Boston, DC, um, uh, the Silicon Valley, obviously there, there's an immaturity here still, and I'm sure it's going to shift very quickly, but there's an immaturity here and there's, there's still a lot of ego in these startups and that's going to have to change because you, you can't have, you can't identify with your baby. You have to identify with the growth of the business and that's, that's what you have to protect. And so for those who don't know, um, Startup Confidential is the book that you wrote. It's been out about a year, year and a half, something like that. Yeah, it's been out about 18 months, sold about 1, 1,500 copies. I, I tour with it. I have a lecture based on it. And it's called Startup Confidential, the raw, unfiltered truth about starting a company. And it walks people through all the things that they need to be aware of. And it encourages them to make the necessary changes to do customer discovery. I tell all my startups now, even in the first meeting before I even decide to come on board in any way, I, I, I say, look, how, how many potential customers have you spoken to? Have you done customer discovery? Have you made 100 phone calls lasting 15 minutes each where you never mention the product and you're strictly exploring the universe that your product lives in? If, if companies or if these founders don't do that, I have, I just have no interest because mm-hmm. other, other, otherwise it, it, it's just a mess. The book is very straightforward in that manner as well. It's just like, boom, 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 boom. And you don't hold back how you feel <laughs> about things. I don't. It, it's, it's, a, it's a little crass and brash, uh, the book. And that's, that's done purposely. There's so many politically correct, you know, a brand agnostic ass kissing fucking vanilla douchebags writing business books. And I don't get anything out of that. I don't get anything out of those books because they're, they're too antiseptic. There's no, there's no meat in them. That's, that's related to the human journey. Mm -hmm. And without that, you don't have a a valuable book. You have an ideology without passion Mm -hmm. and you need passion in that scenario. You need to know, what pains people have gone through. You have to know the reality of something. You have to know what somebody believes. You have to know their opinions. You have to feel their humanity if you're going to get something out of that book. And I see too many business books that are just fucking dickless. They're just nobody's home. And it's mostly, they're mostly written by white men who are just fucking pathetic, frankly. (laughs) Okay, well, <laughs> goodbye, all of the white men in the audience. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm, I'm a white man, so, but I, I just, I just feel like there's, 
there's something in white male culture that it, 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 there's something avoidant, you know, it's like, Oh, I got to make money and I got to be this guy. But there's, there's, I'm not seeing the drive to evolve the drive to be transparent, to be open. I, I don't see that as much mm-hmm. in, uh, in white male culture. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I find that sad and it makes me feel lonely sometimes. I, I think you're not, I think you are correct in that. And actually about a year ago, there was a book released by um, Lewis Howes, who's a brand influencer. Um, who's mm. kind of been on the forefront of social media for a long time. And his book was the mask <clears throat> of masculinity. And he wow. sort of started this movement of really understanding the white male, if you will, um, mm. and the way that oh, I men have to check that book out. Culture. Mm-hmm. I think you would find What's it the really title again? The Mask of Masculinity. Lewis Howes is the oh, author. Great. Yeah. So I think he speak, he's I beginning to speak about what you're talking about as well. So. Oh, neat. It's coming to the surface, awesome. I think. Well, obviously, all all male culture is being challenged right now. I mean, unfortunately, sure it's it's swinging so hard uh, in the opposite direction that there hopefully will be a balance, but I think a lot of damage is being done with how hard it's swinging, but you have to expect that after, uh, especially white men, European culture has raped and abused wisdom, uh, women for centuries. (laughs) So it's the, the swing is expected. And uh, I just hope we all come out of it still loving all sides. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting and educational and hopefully a healing time. I think the next little while. Yeah, maybe. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm pulling for that anyway. <laughs> I love that. It's a good hope. I'm all for it. <laughs> so when you look back on your life, let's say you know, 50 years from now, at the end of your life. What, looking back, do you expect the two biggest highlights of your life will be? Wow, that's a really nice question. Um, well, I hope to be dead a lot sooner than 50 years. I, hopefully, you know, there's, a, there's an exit time that uh, it, it, I, I am still in, fully aware of myself and, and, my, and I have some physical ability to take care of myself. But thank you for the 50-year idea. Sure. Um, so what, what are two highlights? Um, I have to say, God, I have a lot of them, but um, I loved hosting a children's TV show in Boston. It was really lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved my vision quest. I spent a lot of time in the wilderness doing rituals and studying with Native Americans and had a really beautiful vision quest that I wrestled with bears and animals and had a remarkable healing experience there. And I'd have to add a third um, having met so many spiritual masters that, that are alive and fully functioning and doing great things on the planet, having spent time with uh, many of them was very transformative. And um, most especially for me anyway, being being around Ama so much and also opening for her at different um, events, uh, being allowed to create a playful comedy show for her audiences. That was really enjoyable as well. Beautiful. Now let's look forward those 50 years or 20 or 30 or whatever it is that it works out to be for you. <laughs> and what is your sitting in this moment right now, looking ahead, what's your most extravagant wish for the future that's ahead of you? Extravagant wish. You can have any hmm. experience thing, life event. What would it be? I, I'd like to I'd like to find such a remarkable softness of heart and uh, unfolding that it would be considered enlightenment. That's that's what I mostly hope for in my life. Fantastic. And and how will you know when that's arrived? Isn't that the question? I really don't. Yeah, I mean, that, that is the question. I, I have no idea. I, I don't even understand um, what that means. I, I just know it, it somehow represents something that I can relate with, mm-hmm. which is the complete unfolding into the authentic self and being 
at peace with reality as it is in all moments. Fantastic. There are so many ways to get in touch with you. What, what would you like uh, to share? I'll, I'll mention all of the different apps and books and everything in our show notes. So you can, so you can look those up, but what's the best way to find Paul Wagner? Well, paulwagner.com mm-hmm. is really simple, very easy. It's got my books and the, uh, and the cards and everything. And the new cards are coming out in about a month. Um, so paulwagner.com is great. Um, uh, personalityapp.com is the app. And, uh, in about six weeks, there'll be a new version of it, which will be super exciting. But right now, it's still fun. Um, and you'll find the links to both stores. And if people need web and mobile apps, I have awesome teams around the world. And that's at creativelab.tv. A man of many talents and moods. Thank well, you so much. Well, there you go. That's me. <laughs> You're a darling. God bless you. And thanks for your time today. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I hope you enjoyed the journey of today's episode and found a few nuggets to add to your good life, your good living, and whatever you're out there doing today, I hope it's good. See you next time on Living the Good Life.